Good morning. I missed you guys. I did. It's good to see all of you again. Um, well, and some of you are like, why did you miss us? Well, I was off last week, so uh, it's good to be back. Tonight is youth. Uh, we meet at 6.30 to 8. Uh, today is also the installation service of uh, Reverend Paul Ritchie, our new Greensburg District Superintendent. I'm participating in the service. You are invited to attend. It's at 3 p.m. at Community United Methodist Church. On Monday, uh, there will be a planning team meeting at 6.30, and all are welcome to attend. We talk about the church, the good, the bad, and things and places God is leading us. Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, so Bible study will be canceled, but we will be having the Ash Wednesday service at 6.30. We will also be hosting our Holy Cupcake gathering from 11.30 to 1 on Thursday. Did I forget anything? Would I forget? Sure. My dad told me on Friday I was 27. God bless him, yeah. Other announcements, thank you so much. Well, let us begin, oh, what, who am I forgetting? Are you ready to announce that? Is that ready for prime time? You want to wait till next week? You're waiting till next week. Pump the brakes. <laughs> UMW is going to have a fundraiser, so be ready. Debbie. We do have a box ready for our military. Yes, back, back there is um, a red, white, and blue box. It's beautiful, Deb. Um, we are collecting items uh, for the military. Um, as you know, um, my son is, is stationed in the Middle East, and I've been sending him boxes, and um, I know he got a box from Sandy, and he got a box from uh, another church, and uh, he was so excited, but I'm very proud of my son, because, not, because of, not only because of what he's doing in terms of service, but because he gets these boxes and, and he shares them. There are men and women over there that their families don't send them anything. And believe it or not, um, you would think that they would have plenty of things like coffee. Coffee is $5 a cup. Yeah, no, it's not Starbucks, yeah. It's just, you know, Maxwell House, $5. For those of you who are addicted to coffee, think about that. 
Yeah. Um, sugar. They need sugar. Sugar for the coffee. Peanut butter and jelly. So um, they've, they've gone without water a couple times. Baby wipes so that they can get clean. Um, there's a, a lot of things going on. And um, I will tell you that um, Jacob got a box yesterday and, and from me to him. And he opened it up. He took a, a couple things out that he wanted and he put the rest out for others. And they were just overwhelmed because they're not getting packages. When I told Deb this story, she's like, well, let's put something together. Let's send some things um, to, the, to the folks who are serving. So I really appreciate that effort. Other announcements? Well, let's get our worship on. Will you please rise as we center ourselves for worship? Mighty ruler. Most high. Lover of justice. Mystery hidden in the cloud. Great king. Forgiving God. Enthroned one. Mountain dweller. You are exalted over all people. We praise your great and awesome name. We worship at your holy mountain. For you, O oh God, are holy. Join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in face of compassion, and I nurture benevolent hopes. I treasure loves without borders and value simple truths, belief in the peace of one peace. And redeeming, unending, sublime, for my peace is always your peace, as your peace is always mine. Peace makes us one with each other, where faith, hopes, and loves combined. Amen. Ah. 
sing our first hymn. concerns. It is good to see Ray out of the hospital. We will continue to pray for him as he continues to heal. Um, other joys and concerns. Casey. Let us pray. Let's pray for Casey. Josh is getting his knee surgery tomorrow. So we will pray for Josh and for Casey. Yes, yes. Muriel. You know, yeah, it, it was, it was going to be on my list. If, if, I don't know, I, I think I posted it to our Facebook page, but I had the honor of doing an interview with um, a man named Nazar. He's in Ukraine. And he's a former missionary for the United Methodist Church. Michael Airgood, who um, works with us, he is also a former missionary from Ukraine. And we were talking about everything that, that's happening there. I, I texted Michael this morning because I'm worried about Nazar, because as a young man, he would be fighting, but he has a medical exemption, but he is staying there. Seeing the um, pictures, um, just hearing the stories, it is, it is so painful to watch. And I have to tell you, as with someone that is in the military, it is nerve-wracking. So let us pray for our leaders. Ben. And for Russia. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I, yes. Somebody had that posted yesterday, and I'm like, really? We're going to pray for Russia? 
Now, when I calmed my mom jets down, I realized that they do need prayer and that there are men and women over there um, who don't believe in what's happening. Um, Reagan sent me a text before church started um, about Putin um, gearing up um, for nuclear whatever. So let us pray about that. Other joys and concerns? Well, let's pray. Holy God, bring us to your mountaintop. We need to talk to you today. We've come to listen to your words, but God, our hearts are so full that our words may get in the way of hearing you. Let us seek your peace in this chaos. Help us to feel your glory, a glory which can transform our lives. in the recklessness of this world. Help us to find you. May your sun shine down upon us, clearing away the darkness. And it is in his name that we pray, the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture is 2 Corinthians 3, verses 12 through 4 and verse 2. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened, Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set, us in, set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when, but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord, as through reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's grace that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But 
by the open statement of the truth, we are, we are condemned ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lift up our veils, God, that we may see you fully. Amen. I don't know how many of you watch the show America's Got Talent, and I usually see snippets of it on Facebook or YouTube, and the ones that I like the most are when someone comes out that is maybe not as polished, maybe not, doesn't have the look. And you can see Simon Cowell, you know, somebody comes out and they, you know, don't have makeup on, they, they maybe are dressed kind of dowdy, and he's just like, okay. Or maybe they don't speak well. And there is judgment written all over his face. And I have to tell you, like, I am waiting for the day that someone just, like, walks right off the stage. Because I sure would. Do you all remember, and now I can't think of her name, it literally threw out of my head. Um, uh, her name was Susan. Boyle, thank you. Who said that? All right. Ben, two wins today, Ben. Yeah. Um, Susan Boyle. And Susan, like, kind of lived in, in her home, all shut up. She, she was, she's autistic. She, she had a lot of um, things, challenges, and so... Uh, incredibly shy, and she lived in her in her house, and um, just kind of shut off from the world. And she gets on the you know stage, and she's kind of like in a house dress and kind of dowdy looking. Do you all remember seeing her? And you know, Simon calls like, "All right, go ahead, give it a shot." And she just belts it out. Beautiful voice, beautiful voice. The world had turned its back on her. Let her live in a house and just ignored her, ignored her. Finally, somebody encouraged her to use her gift. And it takes a certain boldness to stand up there and sing. It's amazing. Paul is talking to the Corinthians in today's scripture. It is um, his second letter to the Corinthians, and he's trying to help them understand. What is happening? And Paul is a Jew, and he is speaking to his Jewish brethren in this letter. He brings up the story that you can find in Exodus 34 of Moses and how Moses comes down from the mountain and his face is shining. Now this is just after the golden calf incident. So what does Moses do? He puts on a veil. He puts on a veil because the glory of the Lord is too much. 
These folks just built a calf. They couldn't believe that God was going to keep God's promises. How are they going to feel about Moses coming down with a shining face? So he puts on a veil, and Paul is talking about that. That, folks, you have this veil on. You are afraid to see God, and I think that story resonates with us today. We have veils on our faces. There are things we don't want to see. There are things we don't want to talk about. I am obsessed with the movie Encanto. Obsessed? Asked my husband. I was literally playing the music on YouTube this morning as I was getting ready. And there's a song we don't talk about, Bruno. And it, it's because things are messy. We, we don't like to talk about things are, that are messy. And, and we keep things hidden. One of the churches I served before I got there, they had done a campaign where they went through the neighborhood and they just greeted people. They just said hello. They didn't ask them anything other than how are you doing? And we just came by to say hello. And can we pray with you? That was it. And they had trouble getting volunteers. Because how would you feel knocking on doors of strangers and people aren't always nice? Imagine that, having to knock on a door, slam and doors in your face. Paul is telling the folks that it's time to peel off the veil. You can no longer hide yourself. You can no longer say that you aren't strong enough. Because God's glory has been shown to you through Jesus. That this is no longer about Moses and the veil. This is everything to do with Christ and the Holy Spirit. See the shining of God's grace. You know, we can cover ourselves up, but what does it do us? What good? What do we gain? continuing to hide. There is a um, statue at Tuskegee University, and it's of Booker T. Washington, and he is helping a slave, and it's called Lifting the Veil of Ignorance. And it says on the uh, statue, In Christ, the veil of ignorance and death is lifted, so humanity might live in the truth of God's redeeming love and transforming spirit. In today's scripture, it talks about boldness, but the translation um, we read is boldness, but in Greek, boldness is a form of hope. Unlike English, where bold means bold, in Greek there's variations of words, and bold is one of them. And bold is a form of hope. So he is saying that our hope has boldness. We can be brave in our hope. I was watching on the news last night. A man from Ukraine 
And here comes a Russian tank. Now, I don't know about you, but if I saw a Russian tank, full disclosure, I'm going the other direction. That's what I'm doing, truly. This man kneeled in, kneeled in front of the Russian tank. I think I would stand so that he could see me. This guy kneeled. Can you imagine the boldness that it took to do that? But here's what happened. There were people on the sidelines, men and women, and they joined him. So there was a group of them standing in front of this tank. Now, it only lasted for a few moments, but it was a message. What if we stood with that kind of boldness when it came to our faith? What if we stood up and said, I believe in God. I believe in issues of justice. I am willing to speak about things even though it may make you feel uncomfortable. Today is trans... Figuration Sunday. It is about standing um, before God and allowing ourselves to be transformed. We are not supposed to be the same when we come in contact with Christ. We are to be changed, and we are to take that transformation and share it. We are to take off our veils to not be frightened, but to be brave, to be bold. There was a quote on Twitter yesterday. It's from a Ukrainian proverb. You don't really see the world if you only look through your own window. I'm going to read that again. You don't really see the world if you only look through your own window. Be bold, be brave, receive God's grace.
Will you please rise as we sing our next hymn? Receive the transforming love of Christ that changes us, that makes us bold, that makes us free to love, to look out other windows. Receive it, use it, move forward, be bold. Amen. <laughs>